week paintball turret build. Uh, today we're going to be going over the internals of our box here, the main brain of the turret. Um, basically right now I've got it kind of hooked up so I can demonstrate some of the functionality in it and then we're going to pop it open and look what's inside. So let's start off with the paintball guns. The back of the, uh, back of the console here we have three switches. A hole here and a couple jacks. You can see we've got some power plugged in. Right now we're recharging the uh, paintball, gun, paintball guns 9 volt batteries. Um, this is the main power on switch for all of the motion um, and radio equipment in the turret. Here we have a manual test fire uh, of the uh, turret's paintball guns and a safety switch for the paintball guns. So let's kind of walk you through it. First things first, these systems operate independent of each other. Um, you can turn one on or the other or both. Um, and that just kind of provides a little bit of safety while you're setting up as well as the ability to do some tests. So right now I've got the uh, the system active and if I press the button you can hear the relays or the solenoids should I say firing on the paintball gun over here. Pretty cool huh? Um, <clears throat> I can turn it off nothing happens. If I turn it on I go over to my radio Oh, also if I turn on the radio gear there we go. And obviously that only works with the radio gear being turned on. Kind of a nice safety feature. Um, the ability to test the gun and the ability to also get a little bit of motion out of the system as well. Now this is just the uh, this is just the drive system for the the turret on the uh, the lazy Susan here. Um, so let's tear this apart and kind of show you what's going on inside. We've got these quick release connectors here. This basically allows us to quickly uh, take the turret, tear it apart, clean it, you know, do any required maintenance. These are the leads um, coming out of our little cable loom stuff here for the back drive motor um, in the turret. <coughs> when we pop this open, we see all the goodies inside. So we're going to start with actually what's in the lid first. So this is, zooming in extremely far, a base loaded antenna. Alright, so this little guy, this is uh, what we are using for the antenna on the receiver. And that makes it so we just have a nice short little wire here, easy to maintain. Alright, um, let's go through all the different parts. So. Over here we have our radio receiver, and this just has some nice natural uh, plugging capability um, from the BattleBot controller. And we've got our status light; it's on. If we switch off the main power in the back, it's off. Come back down, turn it on, up and running. We also have a status indicator here. This is our electronic switch. This is uh, produced by Team Delta. Uh, those guys absolutely kick ass. Um, Dimension Engineering is who produces this uh, Sabertooth uh, RC um, BattleBot controller, robot controller. <clears throat> Anyways, if if we engage the system and uh, turn it off, you can see we get a faster blink rate out of the LED, and so that's just kind of nice for debugging as we're moving along. So next up, we've got the fire control switch and override for the paintball turrets um, electronics. Uh, we've got a dip switch to control the firing modes, pretty easy. Um, and then down here we've got this simple relay board. There we go, that's what we're looking for. And basically this just has the, the electronic switch that is the trigger in both of the paintball guns um, connected to a single board. That way we get both guns shooting at the same time. Ultimately if you wanted you could run a four channel radio and have guns or both of the guns fire independently. This is a uh, battery pack that provides the power to the relays. Okay, We didn't want to run it off the main 12 volt pack out of here for a couple reasons. Obviously 12 volt, we're running about 5 volts here. Um, but more importantly these are independent systems and we want to keep that functionality 100% independent. Makes it just easier for when you're debugging things. 
On our robot controller, we have the leads coming from the upper motor's drive, plugging in over here. This is the 12 volt power. You can see we've got our wires coming in, and we break them out and bring them back here to this main switch. Pretty straightforward stuff. And then we have the, the top motor for the turret. These are just geared motors. They're quick, easy, cheap motors to find, about 10 bucks a pop. Um, there is something a little unique here that's worth mentioning. On the top of this, we've got play in our motor and we've got a spring. And the reason for that is the, uh, there we go, there's a nice view. Um, we have a slot here that this can travel back and forth in. What that does is it allows for us to have the ability for the wheel to break traction instead of burning out or damaging the motor if something impedes the rotation of the turret. So, <clears throat> over here we have the test fire button and you can see that that does not affect, as I press it, the status light on the electronic switch. Um, the 12 volt batteries for the paintball guns, we have our little charger inlets here. Trying to give you the best picture possible so you can see what we're working with. And then, of course, we have the top tabs. That keeps the lid on. Hard to show that they're threaded, but those little guys are threaded. We just use a tap and die set, and we use some nice hex head bolts that aren't too tall um, to get in the way of the rotation of the, the turret. Up here, in the shadow, and down here, they're hard to see because we have some gear in the way. Hopefully you can see that. There we go. We have the hex heads for the legs on this thing. Let me close this up and we'll flip it over for you. And these are really great. These are the bipods that are used on rifles. Real easy to work with. Easy to put on, simple construction, very reliable. It's kind of nice, they've got a little bit of a, a bite to them, so they'll, uh, they'll stick into the ground. Um, here we have two holes in the bottom, and this is for the little zip tie that holds the battery pack in. Zip ties are cheap, Dispen or, and, and we can get rid of them, we can dispose of them. Um, just an easy way to maintain this, this pack, and the legs just kind of overlap. Give you a little bit of a view there. So, uh, of course we have the rings for holding the paintball tanks or the CO2 tanks. I'm a little bit off there on the poppers. Anyway, so it's pretty simple construction here. Um, go ahead and throw this up on the stand and Bring it down so we can hold it in place. Uh, the wire loom is really great stuff. This stuff's three to five bucks, and both it protects your cables and keeps everything kind of a bit more manageable. But I mean, that's really all there is to this housing with all the electronics. We have our base loaded antenna hiding out here, and we just screw it on top. <clears throat> Pretty straightforward stuff. Um, everything kind of just fits in place the way that this has been built. Now, let's see if I can show you a really hard view here. There we go. You see that motor? It's pretty close to the bottom of the, uh, the turret. The lid's nice and closed. We've got plenty of space in there, but if you use too tall of a motor, you can see you can run into a problem there. So it's really good to make sure that you're not setting it down on your robot controller. So, our next video, we're going to reattach the Lazy Susan and drop the top part of the turret on, show you how to put that top part of the turret together, uh, get some chains, some sprockets, and uh, the paintball guns on there, and hopefully have something that we can play with.